Had to keep working on me Till I got it right, right, right This whole key looking at me now I got it right, right, What's right, good, everybody? Right. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're here to talk about sneaker investments. You know, we talk a lot about how to cop guide, teach you guys how to touch for retail. But what if you miss out on the retail opportunity? You're not able to catch that sneaker's beautiful W, the got em screen. And then say you do catch that, uh, didn't get them. That, that crazy didn't get them that they send you like 3,000 emails for the fact that you did not actually get your shoe. Um, so we're going to talk about um, buying into a certain specific sneakers. We're going to go over a few different ones. We're mainly going to end up focusing on Nike just because I feel like Nike is just a shoe that everyone more or less likes. Although Yeezy is making a huge comeback. Those are just more or less base sizes automatically every 350 for like the past three releases. And the upcoming release, let's say any 350 V2 in base size are definitely a must cop. So in this video, once again, we're going to break it down. We're going to go over stock kicks and goat listings. Also, what I'm personally investing in, what I'm personally holding as well. So without further ado, let's get right in. And we're up. So we're going <laughs> to off the bat start off with the also beautiful Jordan one made carbon and fiber also known as the all-star weekend mids if you didn't know this was supposed to be releasing for all-star weekend although they dropped like three months ahead of all-star weekend actually going down they also dropped the all-star weekend dunks that are very very similar in the fact they have their whole patent uh paneling on this shoe now specifically, as I always say in every single video, every every single so often, you know, I say GS mints are the safest, absolute safest, best. Men's are good, don't get me wrong, men's will appreciate as well, they just take a lot longer. And you can specifically only really focus on like small men's sizing if you really, really want to make the most bang for your buck. Now, bigger size, they do take longer to go up, but sometimes they'll go up a lot faster than mid low size. But that's a really, really rare occurrence. I don't see that happening for this specific colorway. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and say GS size for these. And all sizes are a definite, definite cop. Keep in mind, mints are a much, much higher production than any type of Jordan G or any other Jordan 1 high. It's not even comparable to the fact that how much, uh, how similar they actually are. But yeah, pretty much the Nike release is done. Foot sites are pretty much really done dropping these. I haven't seen anybody actually release these. And all your other online shops are pretty much done as well. I only see a few random ones dropping men's. Now, right now, a good buying price that I would say on these is basically around like the $150 range. I mean, if you find somebody who has bulk, you can for sure find somebody selling GSIs for around $150. Bucks. Even $160 ain't such a bad buying price. Paying shipping and fees, though, strictly just buying on StockX is, I guess, that's like the easiest option you have out there if you really don't want to look for prices. But at that point, I say that uh, you're you're kind of just losing out on potentially free money. Uh, then we go over here to another one, which is a similar color concept. If you can tell, it's black and white. Once again, just two color tones. It's a Nike Dunk Low Retro White Black. Now, this is what I said. I said this is the only color that I would consider really holding along with the UCLA's and possibly the Peach uh, Peach Lows. I mean, Peach Dunk Lows, that is. Why? Just because they're such basic and uh, very sought after colorways. First of all, the black and white color over here, Nike, as I said multiple times, doesn't ever really drop shoes anymore in just simple black and white. They always add, add something or something else to make it a lot less attractive to the regular consumer. I don't know why, but it's just something that they actually end up doing. Like, for example, the Journal 1 High Twist. That's like, they only dropped those like twice, I think, ever, or anything similar to that. Twice. Which is simply just a black and white Jordan 1. Just the same color concept as these. And those now go for like $900 to $1,000. Now, yet again, Dunk Low versus Journal 1 High. They're clearly very different shoes, but I do think that more people do like the Dunk Low silhouette than the Journal 1 High silhouette. So, honestly, for these, I see the sky is the limit, more or less. I do see it's probably reaching to $400 eventually down the line. Keep in mind, this is also one of the first dunks that did come out in such high production where foot sites got them, low tier, kind of like mid tier shops got them, high tier shops got them, finish on JD Sports got them. So it's like the first run that we actually saw Nike drop where they do have a good amount of stock. And it's actually surprising to see that these held up better than like St. John's dunks at one point. So, and they're doing much better than the Olympic dunks as well. So it just goes to show that there is a lot of demand out there and they've been going like a lot. So they did restock a little bit last week and that's where like the dip in price came in around 270. That's a great buying price. But if you can cop pairs right now, bigger man size around 280. I say that's a very, very solid bet. 275. Of course, the lowest is the best you like lower the price the better 11 and a half and 11 i think are extremely low compared to the rest of them uh typically dunks always do better once again in bigger sizes smaller sizes a little bit kind of reverse of the whole mid game but once again dunks are pretty much almost the same it, really not much of a difference between sizes it's always between like 10 to like 30 bucks at max and you got go market over here looking very very similar as well i think it's just a bit yeah just 
a little bit more expensive, a little bit more expensive as expected, because keep in mind, GOAT does have higher fees. Now, once you actually buy this shoe, where do you end up selling them? Once again, I think local sales, I think is the absolute best bet. And how whole, how long should you hold them? Dunks, I'd hold for as long as you can. The mids, I'd say probably that's a solid four to five month hold. Uh, that's for the dunks, I'd say that's like a year hold. And I say it's gonna be a really rare shoe by the time that goes down, because I see a lot of people wearing that shoe. And speaking of the devil, here we got the Jordan 1 White University Blue Black in GS sizes. I think this is a shoe that's at a very, very solid buying price right now. It's almost at its all-time high. I feel like we're breaking down stocks out here, but it's literally like the shoes are like the stock market. And it's literally almost at its all-time low. So you got 340, I mean low. I meant I said a high earlier. You got it reached at one point three hundred and ninety-five dollars, three seventy-nine, and right now they're just about like three seventy-eight. Like that's the last sale specifically. We see on average there's a right now lowest ask is three hundred fifty dollars for a size three and a half. Now three and a half. All right, that does not look right. There is no way this is possible. The highest bid is always supposed to be higher than lowest ask. No, highest bid is always supposed to be lower than lowest ask. So, of course, we got another glitch with StockX over here. Uh, I'd actually buy that shoe right now if I could. I got to try that after we're done with this video. But, uh, yeah, so we got six and a half right here at three. They're all glitched out. They're all glitched out. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, they're actually a little bit higher. Sorry, but it was a little bit glitched out. So, like, around 370. I mean, we got a four and a half, four right here for 369. And it won't go to $369. But more or less, if you can't find any pair at around like the $360 to $380 range, I think that's a great, great buying price. I am going to compare these to the Mochas. I think they're very, very much of a similar shoe. Right now, they're kind of stagnant. They're kind of just, you know, floating up and down. They were much higher at one point. And they spoke, peaked up. And then when the restocks came back from in-store, they went back down. This week, we just had another restock form. Basically, just leftovers and no more foot side restock. So, it's about done. Stock is all liquidated for this shoe. I don't expect anything to happen unless you're talking about, like, a random sneaker stash or sneakers reserve event like they did last week. That's only something that could happen, and it's not going to be that much stock either. I am going to compare these to Mocha's to the fact, like, look, you can take Mocha's, for example. They came out October 31st, right? So, beginning of November. Beginning of November, they kind of were stagnant. The same, kind of almost like the identical graph. They kind of went down a little bit, almost. Close to $300 range, about a month after release. After that happened, people started buying up pairs, and they slowly, slowly went back down, now, back up. Now, it took a month after release for them to go back up, and they really shot up fast within another month. So, one month, they were on the decline. One month, they shot up, and ever since they shot up, they've been more or less kind of stagnant around the $470 range. And they go went up another like 30 bucks, but it took them about three months to go up another $30. Now, if you can catch that good buying price, which I think is about right now for the UNC GSs, I think you're going to be making a solid, solid amount of return. I do see prices going up to around like $450, if not more. For the Jordan 1 UNC GS, it's just going to take a lot of capital to buy up a lot of pairs. It's kind of like almost like a common sense investment. It's not really that like intricate and breaking it down, but people like these more than Mocha's. The only thing that's holding these down right now is the fact that there were so many in-store restocks and those FLX reservations. You can see men's are at its all-time low as well. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and say these are a very, very great buy. I don't see them dropping below 400 US dollars. I didn't think the restock would affect them this much. I thought they would have dropped down to like 450 after the restock. They dropped a bit more. And that just means it's just a greater buying opportunity. Uh, and yeah, once again, Mocha's is very, very similar in the fact that they did follow a similar route. Now, Mocha's are not as high in men's and they're not as in demand now. Dude, this graph is fucked. And I see probably men's uh, UNC's hitting about $500 in about three months or so. Uh, another shoe we got over here is this Nike Supreme Dunk Low Mean Green. Now, this shoe right over here, I definitely did not expect it to go up this fast. I don't think many people honestly did. Uh, we're going to be talking about our worst, inv worst sneaker investments tomorrow. So, it's kind of like a two-part series, I guess, we're doing. And um, now, I didn't sell mine. I have mine. If you guys can see in my intro videos, I still have mine. Uh, what I did recommend people to do, though, I saw them, uh, you can go back, check the footage. I told people to buy their pairs, sell it either pre-orders around $1,600 or sell it right away, which was not a bad idea. If you sold it right away, you sold it for like $1,400. And I said, rebuy in once the hype kind of dies down. Hype died down a never, really. Hype kind of just died down on release day when market was around $750 to $800. And the day after that... And within like two days, three days, market just started going back up. So if you followed that route, I guess you were doing good. But honestly, myself, I did not see these doing that well. I could have bought a bunch of pairs at $1,000, which was $200 over StockX. They've released Insider Supreme. Uh, but I don't think it's too late. Listen, the mean green, as I mentioned from the beginning, the get-go before they even came out, I said green was going to be the most limited. And clearly the proof is in the pudding by the type of uh, resale market it's after. Brown was a second limited, as I said. Now, I think it's honestly too late for both of these. I wouldn't get in. I think it's, you know, they're going to keep going up. But at this point, I just feel like it's very, very risky. The next color I see going back up is the blue. Now, the blue pair right now is around $1,400 US dollars. And they're kind of sporadic. I mean, you got the 11 and a half year at 1800 
And what happened, a same thing that happened with the beetroot browns. The green went up, then the brown followed, blue was slowly following, and the black is going to follow it last. Just because black is just like your typical color, and they had the most stock of those. The unique colorists always tend to go up when it's a special collaboration or special shoe like this. So essentially, once again, I do think the blue is a good mind price, and even the black pair as well. Once again, it's just going to take some time to go up. Now, next up, we are going to go into this shoe. Now, the SB Dunks, I'm going to say the Supreme ones, I'm going to say that's a solid, like, six-plus month hold. I would hold those for as honestly your whole life. That's what I essentially plan on doing. Now, this is a shoe I consider holding for, like, one month to two months and selling it right away. Following the basic trend of what happened with the past, Jordan Retro is going to join three Georgetowns, Jordan 9 Charcoals. She, like, icon kind of more or less, like, iconic colorways of some Jordan GRs. They tend to go back up. Now, this is one of them that I do see going back up. Uh, listen, they're around $250 right now. If you can buy them right now, like, $220, $230, $240 even, I do see it being worthwhile. Um, you got 11 dollars right here going back up to $260. Of course, the difference between lowest ask and highest bid is going to get bigger and bigger as time goes on, as less are unavailable and the kind of just dies down because there's another zero that comes out like the toro fives are coming out this weekend so that's the next jordan five to come out so more people are going to move on to that but eventually i do see these going back up you can see they took a little bit of a dip they were a little bit up a little bit back of a dip and they're kind of like slowly on a mini incline back up now it's going to take some time there's about 496 sales in the past well since it kind of more or less came out and the specific 11 and a half so that's some solid amount you got to always go by volume specifically today it's wednesday and they've had over one two three four about like yeah, a shit ton. Of, there's a sale literally almost every hour. So you can tell there's a ton of volume for this shoe. There's a ton of demand out there. It just takes time for the, the amount of asks up there to disappear. So by the next like few couple days, I see them kind of just skyrocketing back up to around the $280 range. And you can see go market over here is just about more or less the same. It's a little bit um, it's a little bit higher, and StockX tends to follow the go uh, the trend of goat. So if you want to do like a quick little hold, quick little investment that once to two months, this is your shoe to go for. Uh, then we go on to the, this is just some, we're going to get into some mids right now and lows that I just like are kind of like common sense investments and you should definitely just consider holding or buying up pairs. I would say not so yet, but like a little bit more like a holder sell now. If you got your hands on a pair by now, I do think it's too late to really sell the Jordan 1 lows. If you're able to sell for like the $230, $240 range, oh, I take that back. Wow. Smaller sizes really held up their value. I personally only have a size six, six and a half, and a seven. We have nothing under a six just yet. I'm not going to buy it pairs anyways for resale just yet either. More and more pairs are going to come out. It really hasn't been a ton of foot site action online. So I'm going to wait for that to happen as more and more resources begin to come in and more and more pairs tend to release. Now, this is also a Jordan 1 load that's not in ton of like stock, but it's in ton of demand. This is one of the craziest Jordan 1 loads as well. It's kind of ugly to me i'm not a fan of it i don't know who really is buying these i haven't seen anybody wear them on the streets at all but i mean uh, people are paying for this show i definitely think it's more or, so, more or less an overseas market for these uh but it is worth the buy absolutely i just would not pay resale for these just just yet i mean if you can find pairs for like the 150 to 180 dollar range which i doubt you're going to then obviously you must cop i do see giving it some time and i do see prices going back down they were a little bit lower 255 then they just kind of went back up keep in mind sneakers that nike never dropped these and eventually they will down the line and then same thing goes for these mids now mids are not as sought after as the lows uh it's not the right time to buy these mids either i give it some time i'd probably see these dropping around like the 140 130 range if you can cop pairs at that range like 130 snipe them and take them home with you because i think that's a really really solid buying price if you want to complain about oh market is not that high near me da 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 consignment 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 you can always ship your shit to another consignment store and they will take your money and they will take your sales the stadium goods flight clubs stores like that don't even don't even say if you know you know type of thing and they're absolutely moving these mids and lows out there now there's another joe low that just came out on sneakers so like once again once not sneakers i keep mixing that up nike mids and lows never come out on sneakers they only come out on nike app themselves now this shoe did drop on nike app last week so more or less orders are beginning to come in this week so i'd say by the end of this week early next week around april 10th april 15th just around that area i would definitely consider buying up a few pairs around like the 130 140 dollar range this is a very big shoe around the springtime I really consider holding this shoe for about uh, three to four months yet again. Now, the only easy investment we have in this lineup, and the final shoe we're going to get into is these. The Kai Knights dropped down way more than I expected. And I guess people just still didn't learn their lesson from the Sunflowers. If you what happened with the Sunflowers 700 V3s now, Sunflowers came out did also sit for a bit longer. They weren't as in demand and didn't sell it as quickly. They were much more of an easier cop, but they did see a much more limited release at the same exact time. They shot up crazy. I told people to hold on to some flowers. A lot of people didn't listen. A lot of people doubted it. I understand. Sometimes I am wrong. Like everyone got mistakes. We're going to go over those tomorrow. 
But listen, these right here, I'd say, are a very, very solid cop. Bay sizes, as long as the bigger men's size, I think they're a very, very solid opportunity. Listen, I drove to New York City, paid tolls, and I basically paid resale for my pair. Because I drove to New York City, paid tax, paid tolls, and all that type of jazz. So I paid more or less resale for mine. And um, I only cop a few pairs, nothing too crazy. I'm going to end up buying more soon. Uh, once I find someone who's willing to sell me a couple more pairs than just one or two. Because I have a lot, a lot of faith in this sneaker. Every 73 besides one, the Clay Browns has really gone up. I think this one will follow. It'll just take a few months because look at these flowers. Same exact thing. Kind of were down, down, down. And then just this is a beautiful graph. This is what you want to see. And I absolutely just shot up within the past last two months to the $350 range. Now, we do have these, the, uh, oh, no, the Clay Browns. I just want to look at them real quick because we have a, we have a, we have more than just a few of these. So, we paid retail for all of them, so I'm not really complaining. But, um, yeah, these have not moved, really. It's surprising to see that these have not moved just because the fact they're an all-over neutral. And that's, like, one of my bad investments, I guess you can say, because they have just, I mean, they've gone up slowly, but not to where the point where it's really worth investing in them. So, yeah, take the easy investment with a grain of salt. It's a tough one, but always buy 350s in base size. Now, easy hype is back. Springtime, summertime, people got money to spend, and I'm just making it dance. Keep in mind, stimulus checks does affect the sneaker market a lot, whether you realize it or not. When the stimulus checks came in, when their first batch came in, people's shoes just all of a sudden just started going up, up and up and up. People haven't got them all in yet. They are starting to still come in. So our market is still going to hold up its value for the next, I think, about two months or so. The market I see hitting a crash after that, like a mini little crash or just not so much uh, volume going into these sneakers. So keep that in mind. Catch you guys tomorrow with the, my worst investments ever. And that's it for me. Peace.